Welcome into Sports Memo's Betting Podcast for Friday, April 12th. We got Teddy covers on, and we're talking the NBA playoffs. Teddy, welcome to the podcast. Happy Friday to you. Hey, great to be here, Drew. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man, and I'm, I'm excited about this NBA playoff season. You know, I don't get into the NBA too much, and then in the playoffs, it starts to heat up. Man, do you find success uh, betting in the NBA playoffs? There, I've had some very, very good years in the NBA playoffs, and other years haven't been as good. Uh, so... Do I like the – oh, yeah, I like the NBA playoffs. I like them as a fan uh, and certainly as a better. There are some really good opportunities year in, year out in the NBA postseason. But there are also a lot of pitfalls that you got to be aware of. That's one thing that I think, you know, being in Vegas 20 years and having suffered through some of those pitfalls in years past at times really helps me because uh, you're going to avoid when, – when you start seeing these spots, oh, I remember that one, not so fast. Um, I, I think that really helps me. So I'm expecting a, a strong postseason. I really am. It's been a great regular season in the NBA. Closed out, what, 62% over the last eight weeks since before the All-Star break. So there's a good handful of teams I've got as bet on and a good handful that I've got as bet against going in. And hopefully that'll pay some dividends for myself and my clients over the course of the next two months as the NBA playoffs drag on. And Teddy's got a Game 1 playoff shocker up at sportsmemo.com. He's also, if you're listening to this on Friday has a uh, tremendous trifecta three plays discounted up at sportsmemo.com great day to check out the site and uh, Teddy touched on it he is uh, 62% in the NBA the last two months and also 106 and 86 55% that's all sports all releases no cherry picking since January 1st so his 2019 record nothing to shake your head at plus 36 units 106 86 55 percent all plays, all releases for 2019. So Teddy's seeing it well. Teddy, let's start off here. Game ones and uh, any any series overall breakdowns you want to go. Let's start off with uh, top of the card here. Brooklyn, Philadelphia. Looks like in game one, Philadelphia laying seven at home, 232 the total. And I'll tell you what, the markets really have no idea what to do with the Sixers. You know, Philly, with all the injuries they had at the, re- at the end of the regular season, where they didn't really get their core group on the floor together at all uh, down the stretch the markets, they don't know and of course, we don't know whether J.J. Reddick's going to play for Philly, we don't know whether Joel Embiid is going to play for Philly Ben Simmons, he's had a dental procedure this week uh, they're saying that he's maybe, I'm expecting Ben Simmons to play, Jimmy Butler he hasn't played, but uh, and he's dealing with back issues he is expected to play, but that's a lot of big name injury concerns for Philadelphia, a team that is all about their starting five and a team that, in theory, because of that, should be positioned for a postseason run. They've obviously uh, made every move in the regular season for win now mode. And yet, you know, from a series price perspective, from a f- game one perspective, there's a fair bit of respect for the Brooklyn Nets in this number. Now, the Nets, you know, did enough down the stretch to get into the postseason and closed out with three straight uh, wins, including impressive road wins at Milwaukee and Indiana. They've certainly been pretty good road underdogs on the season. And, of course, the Nets, a very deep team. They've gotten a lot uh, off of their bench all year. That's not Philly's strength. So uh, the, the fact that the Nets have the depth edge you know, that might matter in some series. I don't know if it does in this one. Worth noting, though, Brooklyn won uh, uh, in Philly once this season. They In the season series, they covered the number in three out of the four meetings they were able to give the Sixers a real battle repeatedly in those regular season matchups. Teddy, in the East, we got uh, the two-seed Toronto Raptors hosting Orlando, and it looks like 213 being the uh, the, the total here. Minus eight and a half in game one, the Raptors land to the Magic. How would you look to bet this one? And, the, I mean, when we talk about totals in the NBA playoffs, it really is going to be an interesting scenario because postseason scoring tends to be a good notch or two lower than regular season scoring. The defensive intensity ratchets up. And yet, this was the highest scoring regular season in modern NBA history and by a fairly wide margin. So we're seeing the first round totals reflect what we saw in the regular season, these you know higher scoring games. <laughs> uh, but obviously in the postseason, that sometimes tends to change. And Orlando, Toronto 
Certainly a series that's taken a fair bit of under money for game one. Of course, you look at the Magic, 21-9 and nine in the last 30 games. They came out like a freight train down the stretch and had everything to do with their defensive intensity. Uh, prior to that 21-9 and nine stretch, they ranked number 16 in the NBA in defensive efficiency. During that 21-9 and nine stretch, since the beginning of February, the Orlando Magic, number one in the NBA in defensive efficiency. So their defense has been there. And the Magic, in some ways, match up well with the Raptors because Toronto's greatest strength is their bench. Orlando's bench has been pretty good. <laughs> uh, you know, instrumental uh, in their late season run. And, of course, this is a Raptors team that has, in recent years, been a disaster in the home favorites role in the postseason. They were bad in that role last year, the year before, the year before that. That's Dwayne Casey's teams. This is Nick Nurse's teams. You bring in guys like Kawhi Leonard and Marcus Soule, and you wonder, does that stigma of being unable to cover his home chalk in the postseason continue for Toronto? Or with the new additions, is this team finally ready to make a statement with a game one victory. Teddy, great breakdown so far. We got the one versus the eight in the West. LA Clippers at the Golden State Warriors up next. Twelve and a half the Warriors laying at home. Two thirty one and a half the total, Teddy. And uh the Golden Golden State hosting the Clippers here. Do the Clippers have a chance, one, to uh to give them a shot at winning the series? And more importantly, what about covering games? The Clippers aren't winning this series. Okay. Uh, hmm. Uh, I think they'll be hard pressed to win a game, uh, you know. And uh, you know, Golden State—not that they uh, flipped the switch, but they played a lot better the last two weeks. You know, it felt like they were getting their act together a little bit. And the Warriors are not a team I'm in any urgency uh, to stand in front of. They are the class, but they're priced like the class. Of course, the last time these two teams played, one thirty-one, one hundred four. They won in LA back in January, one twelve to ninety-four. Non-competitive. A contest, and it's a Clippers team that has overachieved in so many ways this season. They do play defense, though, and that's something that could work well in their favor against Golden State. But uh, I mean, there's a class difference that is very real in this series. It's represented in the in the, uh, the series price, you know, uh, minus twenty thousand. I'm seeing at some spots uh, for. Uh, uh, Golden State, you know, minus 13,000 at Chris. Uh, you know, that's a little bit rich uh, for my liking. And, of course, when you talk about the game one numbers of 12 and a half and 232, uh, I mean, if the Warriors are hitting, the Clips are going to have a lot of problems. But from a general value perspective, I mean, L.A.'s been covering numbers like this all year. Uh, I don't know if I want them game one. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, stepping in front of the Warriors train is going to be tough. And guys, San Antonio, Denver up next, Teddy. 211 the total. Looks like the Nuggets laying five and a half at home. Yeah, a lot of respect uh, for Denver from the opening number. We've seen uh, the sharp money pour in. Uh, not pour in, but you know, a fair bit of sharp money coming on Denver in this ballgame. Certainly, you look at the statistical profiles, you can understand why Denver's defense has been there all season. San Antonio's defense, not so much. Uh, the Nuggets have been a great home team. Uh, all year. The Spurs also have been a great home team all year, which means they have not fared particularly well uh, on the highway. And of course, from a point spread perspective, this is the lowest number for Saturday's games and really the second lowest number uh, of uh, the entire weekend's game. So there is a fair bit of respect for that San Antonio Spurs pedigree. They've been here before, as opposed to a Denver team that had a great regular season, but has not been here before when you look up and down that Nuggets roster uh, you're not seeing a ton of playoff veterans the market's very much reacting to that all that being said you know from a defensive standpoint from a home court standpoint there are uh, plenty of factors pointing to the home favorite in this ball game we've seen a, not a huge move on the series price but we've seen fairly significant Denver money coming in for the series and for game one the wise guys like this Nuggets team a lot more than they like Greg Popovich, even though Popovich is the guy with the five rings on his fingers. All right, Teddy, let's head to Sunday's games. We got a 1 o'clock Eastern tip here. Indiana at Boston. Celtics laying seven at home, 209 and a half the total. And this, of all the series, this is a series that nothing would surprise me in. You know, if the Celtics flip the switch 
as in theory they're supposed to be capable of doing. Boston could sweep this team. I mean, the market show, you know, the, look at the series price is all you need to know. You know, this is a four and a five seed, and <laughs> the five seed is as high as 550 <laughs> in some spots right now, uh, you know, uh, on the series price. So there is a fair bit of residual market respect already baked into the line here uh, and baked into what, what the Celtics numbers are. But, of course, you know, we're talking about a Pacers team that, you know, battled to the wire in the postseason last year. And I know that was Oladipo series. Uh, but, you know, even without Oladipo, Indiana didn't fall apart down the stretch. They were really banged up the last couple of weeks. Uh, and the fact they're playing hell, uh, on Sunday, I think, will help the Pacers a fair bit. But in my mind, this series is all about Boston. You know, how capable are the Celtics? Celtics A game is good enough to win the East. And the Celtics, with the Kyrie situation hanging over them and some of the locker room concerns they've had, they could get knocked out in the first round and it wouldn't shock me. So uh, for game one, this is a watch and learn game for me. Um, not a game that I'm uh, necessarily going to get involved with. All right. Teddy covers. He's had success in the NBA, 28 and 17, 62 percent the last two months, 106 and 86 in 2019 across all sports. He's got a bunch up for the NBA playoffs. His playoff shocker is available, and we got a, a special coupon code here on the podcast. NBA 199 will get you Teddy covers rest of the NBA season all the way throughout the NBA finals for just $199. It's up for $425 right now at the site. So that is $226 off of the retail price for Teddy Covers rest of NBA season for just $199. That's coupon code NBA199 at checkout for the rest of Teddy covers NBA season for just 199 bucks. Great deal there for the the podcast special. And it's only going to be available uh, today, tomorrow, and Sunday. So throughout the weekend, you can jump on Teddy covers rest of NBA season for just 199 dollars using the coupon code NBA199. Teddy, let's move to the 3:30 Eastern game, 12:30 Pacific tip. Oklahoma City at Portland. Looks like we've got 225 as the total competitively priced game here with the Trailblazers laying two and a half or three depending on where you're shopping. Yeah, and really a fascinating game and when we look at the numbers the math here is really interesting. So it's the only situation out of these series where you're going to see a game, a home team favored game one, game two, and yet the road team is the favorite for the series. And that's pretty rare. You know, the Thunder as high as what minus one uh, minus one I'm seeing no 160s out there I'm like there were some 160s mostly 150 155 but OKC is the favorite in this series the clear favorite in this series for game one Portland is the clear favorite laying two and a half three uh, across the board that's not something you see very often and when it comes to the series price adjustments after game one you might see a pretty big one in this one depending on who uh, emerges victorious. Um, the Thunder, at no point down the stretch, did the Thunder look like a good basketball team. You know, uh, there were just on court issues with that squad, night in, night out. The defense, which has the potential to be a lockdown, wasn't. The offense was too much Russ and PG and not enough everybody else. And the Thunder were a very mediocre team over the back half of the regular season. That being said, the Blazers got swept out of the playoffs in the first round last year. They had two home games to start their series against New Orleans. Didn't win either one as chalk. They got swept out of the first round in 2017 as well. Portland's been a bad postseason team, ATS. And oh, by the way, this is where Nurkic gets missed. You know, uh, you bring in Enos Cantor. Enos Cantor can do some things offensively. Defensively, it is a problematic matchup against an Oklahoma City team that loves to penetrate the paint. I don't know if Cantor's going to be able to do anything. Maybe John Collins will have to be the defensive stopper for the Blazers, but I can understand why they're dogs in this series. You know, I'm not even sure that McCollum is back to 100% yet, even though he's been back on the floor over the last week. It's going to be a Lala Lillard for the Blazers, and I don't know if Lillard's going to be able to do it by himself. I, and again, I can understand why OKC is the chalk in the series. 
and I wouldn't be laying with Portland in game one. Yeah, that is an interesting aspect as far as uh, the series price and the game one price that you laid out. We got 7 o'clock tip here on the East Coast, 4 o'clock Pacific. The other one versus 8 seed game, Detroit at Milwaukee, 219 and a half the total. We're also seeing a common number here with the one seeds laying at home, 12 and a half. Uh, ask you the same question. Do the Pistons have a chance uh, to win the series? Any chance at all? And uh, more importantly, to cover any games? Uh, I don't think the Pistons are winning any games. I don't know if the Pistons are covering any point spreads. Uh, I mean, again, you look at the two games in Milwaukee, and again, you don't put too much in the regular season, but, you know, 115-92, 121-98, the Pistons weren't in either one. Um, you know, blown out by 10 at home the last time they played uh, Milwaukee. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously Detroit with, I mean, Blake Griffin, to say he's hobbled is an understatement. Blake Griffin's not going to be healthy for this series or for game one or for any part of it. And the supporting cast for Detroit, you know, yeah, when Ish Smith is hitting shots, you know, uh, they're they're capable. Uh, you know, when Luke Kennard's hitting shots, they can hang tough. But the you know the Bucks have been really good in terms of coming out in Game One in the postseason and and playing competitively. And uh, I've seen nothing but go for the kill mentality out of Milwaukee all year. Uh, no interest in Detroit in Game One. No interest in Detroit for the series. I expect the the Bucks will sweep, and if they don't, maybe it'll be five. Giannis is upgraded to probable uh, for Sunday's game. Yeah, I like the Bucks here too. I I, I would lay the uh, number with the Bucks. We got uh, nine thirty Eastern, six thirty Pacific. Tip Utah at Houston. Looks like the Rockets laying six and a half. Teddy two fourteen being the total. Yeah, and this is a sharp square divide game. Uh, the wise guys clearly like the Jazz and their defensive profile. Uh, and their, you know, uh, success in the postseason in recent years. Uh, and the public, of course, is, is going to like the Rockets. The Rockets have been making money for them uh, repeatedly down the stretch. They've got James Harden. They've got, the, you know, the, their, uh, the high-scoring team. The team is setting NBA uh, three-point records, which they tied and then broke uh, over the last week of the season, draining threes uh, for a game. Uh, so there's clearly, you know, public's going to like the home favorite, and the wise guys like the defensive-minded dog. I watched these teams play a couple times this season, and boy, I, I I don't like the way Utah matches up against Houston. When you think about the Jazz defensively, why are they so good on defense? They're so good because Rudy Gobert doesn't let anything pass him in the paint, and they're really good defending uh, the pick and rolls. They are not great at defending this, you know, the, the pace and space teams. And when you have a squad like Houston that can put four shooters out in the perimeter and just, you know, uh, someone will penetrate and kick it out, and someone will be open. That's not the Jazz defensive strength. And that's why, you know, we've seen uh, a couple of big blowouts uh, from Houston in this series. Jazz played great ball down the stretch. Donovan Mitchell's been fantastic in recent postseasons. Utah's deep. Utah plays deep. There's a lot to like about the Jazz, but uh, the Rockets are the class here. And I wouldn't be surprised they laid a beatdown on Utah in game one. Utah, the wise guy favorite. I don't know if you want to be with the wise guys in the NBA postseason. They've been a lot of statistical profiles and often fail to recognize the matchups are different than the statistical profiles might indicate. Guys, the coupon code is NBA199 to get rest of NBA season with Teddy Covers throughout the NBA Finals for just $199. That's $226 off the retail price. Great deal here. We'll run it through Sunday night. So if you're listening to the podcast on Friday, you'll be able to get his Game 1 Playoff Shocker included with that and all of the plays that he releases in the NBA Playoffs for just $199. That's using the coupon code NBA199 at checkout. Teddy obviously knows this stuff. 62% in the NBA the last two months, 55% in 2019 across all plays, all sports. Teddy, great breakdown of all the Game 1s and series prices there. Uh, really enjoyed it. Anything else you want to throw out before we shut this down? Yeah, it's really important to talk about Game 1s versus the series. Mm-hmm. The best bets aren't usually in Game 1. <laughs> you know, The best bets come 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Game 1, there's a lot of watch and learn. I'm involved in two games uh, this weekend for Game 1 where I thought it was reasonable, but neither one's a giant step-up wager. We'll get those opportunities. There'll be a fair few of them between now and the end of this NBA postseason, but God, don't blow your bankroll before the weekend's over uh, betting these NBA game once. Many of them 
a good handful of them will be coin flips when it comes to uh, uh, the ATS results. All right, Tay, All we'll right. follow up next week with the uh, NBA Playoff Podcast next week, either Thursday or Friday. But, Teddy, thanks for the time. Best of luck with your bets this weekend. Guys, best of luck with your bets out there. Have a safe, fun weekend, and we'll talk on Monday.